this is Caroline Abicatar with Young Survival Coalition here at the 40th Annual San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. We've just finished the first day of the general sessions and there were some exciting presentations today. We have with us Dr. Matthew Ellis from Baylor Medical College who is going to share with us some of the highlights of the first day. Dr. Ellis? Thank you. Well, you know, it's good to be here and good to be discussing things with everybody. This is actually a very important conference for younger women with breast cancer. There are two critical, I think, presentations to think about. The first of which today was patients uh, with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer who are premenopausal and unfortunately have metastatic breast cancer. And that particular study was looking at a drug called ribocyclic. Now we know that ribocyclic can help postmenopausal women with advanced breast cancer. But this particular study focused entirely on premenopausal women uh, and the appropriate treatment. And essentially what it found was when you add various maneuvers to dampen down the endocrine therapy, the, the, the endocrine system with injections to suppress the ovaries and either tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor as the control arm, if you add ribocyclib, it essentially doubles the the time to progression and it increases the response rate. And what I particularly liked about this study, it all showed, also showed enhanced quality of life uh, for patients receiving the new drug. Um, so, and I, I think what's significant there is they were really focused on young women with metastatic breast cancer. The second uh, uh, presentation, which you'll hear more about tomorrow, is the uh, extended results of the soft text trials, which are asking about this question of ovarian suppression in young women uh, to improve their breast cancer outcomes. Now, of course, there's downsides to ovarian suppression, which would be evident to everybody. And so it's the benefit of, if you like, more aggressive endocrine therapy with not only tamoxifen, but additional maneuvers to uh, suppress um, ovarian function and then adding maybe another drug called uh, exomestane in replacement to tamoxifen. So we will see quite mature results from those trials tomorrow and I think that's going to be a really important discussion point. Thank you Dr. Ellis. One question for you, if uh, young women who have metastatic breast cancer are interested in learning more about ribocyclib, is it best for them to speak to their own oncologists about potential clinical trials or is there a different method? to learn more about this drug? Well, uh, ribociclib is an approved drug, uh, at least in the United States and some countries. Uh, so um, it, it likely is, is, is available to at least some of your audience if they have metastatic disease. Uh, there are other drugs in this class which do represent alternatives to ribociclib. One's called abamaciclib and one's called palbociclib. So certainly discuss with your oncologist which one of these you're going to consider. And then finally, clinical trials is a very, very important issue because we don't study patients enough. Uh, if you look at the number of patients going on clinical trials, young or old, it's less than 5% of metastatic patients experience a clinical trial. And so, in, and so uh, the other thing that you'll be seeing next year, which perhaps I can talk about in the future, is a program called NBC Connect, which is an, a web app that patients can volunteer and participate in and become uh, partners in improvements in outcomes uh, with researchers. So NBC Connect, look for it uh, in the first quarter of next year. That sounds wonderful. We will make sure our young survivals are aware and looking for that program. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. Great. Good to hear from everybody.